From Dallas, Texas, it's Flash Friday. He had a voice that could make a wolverine purr. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Here we are in Dallas, Texas with our friends from Live 105.3. We're here for the big Live 8 event tomorrow night. We'll be broadcasting from Live 8 uh, tomorrow, and that's going to be at uh, 4 p.m. from 4 until 6. We'll have a local broadcast here in Dallas. Heard exclusively on Live 105.3. So you can hear it beginning at 4 Central Time. Now, if any of you people, uh, for example, on the West Coast want to hear this broadcast, because it's only on one station, you can go to live1053.com during the program tomorrow, which will be 2 to 4 Pacific Time, 4 to 6 Dallas Time. And you can uh, listen live. You can hear it. But... uh in L.A., you won't hear it on the radio. You'll only hear it if you get online and go to live1053.com. It's that simple. Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. It's wide open telephones here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Michelle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I just wanted to tell you that I think you are a very naughty, naughty boy. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> well, um, I don't know. I guess you, you know, a lot of the girls have called up and just kind of expressed to you that, you know, they don't like the way you um, put down women or, you know, use women. And I got to say that maybe it's that you haven't found the right woman. What do you think about that? Darling, I've uh, been doing this show going back to the days when I was married. Uh-huh. Going back to the days when I had a live-in girlfriend. The show is and, the show. Yes. Um, well, I I think that perhaps you are overly critical of women and maybe don't realize that there are women out there that have the full package, that aren't just money-grubbing, that um, have a good sense of self-worth, that are worth spending time with. And, um, you know, and maybe your system works for you, but it doesn't necessarily work for everybody. It works for a lot of people, and you've heard them call in here, too. I do. I do. And and those are some people it might work for, but it gets old for them after a while. And you oh, I'm, I'm, not I'm not hearing I'm not hearing a lot of guys calling in saying that my system's getting old. Getting laid anytime, any place by hot chicks does not get old for most guys. I think I I would have to disagree because I've talked to several guys. I mean, I I know I'm married, but I know. What's a guy going to tell guys. you? You know what, honey? I'm a player. And I'm going to go out with as many chicks as I can. What, who's going to say that to you? You know, people are honest. People have been honest. Not really. <laughs> not about that. Guys will say that to other guys. They're not going to say it to you. You don't think there's anything beyond this superficial, you know, getting laid? There's nothing you superficial know. about it. Is it superficial to eat breakfast? No. I eat it every day. Day in, day out. Some okay. days it's a bagel. Some days it's a couple of slices of bacon and an egg. Some days it's oatmeal. Every day. I never say to myself, you know what? This eating breakfast is getting old. I Okay, I understand your point. I, I get that. But Ejaculating is like eating breakfast. It is a bodily function. 
and uh, it doesn't get old any more than breathing in and breathing out gets old. Okay, what about okay? What about women? Would you give the same advice to women that you do your men callers? I mean, if you... they want to get laid. Okay, and do you think that getting laid is what? Is that the ultimate? I mean, is that? No, it just happens to be something that a lot of people are paying for, which is available for free. It is available for free, but if you want something more meaningful, which is sometimes worth I've got it. pals. You know what? I've got friends. You know, I've got friends I've known for over 25 years. That's good. That's great. I don't, I don't need companionship. I've got plenty of it. But don't you think love is something worth having? Love. Even if I love somebody, they don't have to live in my house. They don't have to take my money. No, and not all women want to take your money. A lot of women. I didn't women say all healthy. women do, but most women think we well, yeah, we get one account, we put everything in the pot, and then we're going to spend out right of the pot. You know, okay, well, let's get checks with little kitty cats on them. Okay, I I am you know I'm married and I'm happily married, and my husband has his account, I have my account, and at the same time, you know, we have we have a mutual account. But for the most part, you know, I don't really, it never really has to. This show's not about problem. you. This show is about millions and millions of women. It's not about you. Right, but, but my point is that marriage can be, it can, you can make it work. Where Somebody it's, it's can really... win lotto tomorrow night. Somebody can. You know that? Uh, yes. I wouldn't, bet my paycheck. I wouldn't bet my paycheck on it. Right. Oh, okay. I understand. I understand where you're coming from, but your system doesn't work for everyone. You know. Again, there... I'm not hearing from a large number of people who are complaining about the system. But that could be because your show caters to people that are looking to get laid. All right. So the people who don't want to get laid, they're listening to love songs on the coast. Not they're listening to their wives devote uh, Luther Vandross songs to them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I find but your show very interesting, and I and I don't. Find my show is done for the people who actually listen to it, not for those who don't. Yes, I know, I know, I understand, Tom. I just, you know, sometimes I think you can use a great big spanking. Uh, darling, may get an appointment with me. <laughs> Oh, I could teach you a lesson or two. Is that so? That is so. Your husband out of town anytime soon? I'll come over and pull my pants down. Oh, you're a bad boy. You naughty boy. <laughs> and you love it, too. I do. I'm one of those. I can be the, the Madonna and the whore, you know, one of those. Really? People. Yes. I am the full package that way, yes. All right, I'm looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> it's you Southern California. Off. It's Southern California. You'll be back in the barrel eventually. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. I don't know about that. Mm. <laughs> but you're thinking about it right now. You know, maybe. You know, I I'm very I'm very loyal, so you know. I know. But sure, thoughts are. I'm thoughts. very patient. Uh, believe me, uh, whenever uh, whenever things go south, you know where to go. <laughs> Thank you for that, Tom. Thank you, darling. Okay, take care. I'll, I'll be shelter from the storm. Don't lick a gift horse in the mouth. For all intents and purposes, I'll be there. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, <laughs> Nathan. Nathan on the Tom Likas show. Wide open telephone. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing just great. All right. Well, first I wanted to tell you I disagree with just about every single thing you say, but I wanted to back you up on one thing. Uh, the whole point of your show is to attract listeners. And if that means saying something that's shocking or rude, then that's what you say. So I understand that. And if somebody doesn't want to be made fun of, 
or uh, if they don't want you to pick apart the vocabulary, then uh, they shouldn't be calling you. Right. However, I did want to point out something I heard, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to explain it to me in case I misheard you. Uh, you just used the phrase, never lick a gift horse in the mouth again. Right. Don't you think that's good advice? Oh, I do in one sense. The second word, is it lick or look? If someone gave you a gift horse, do you think it's a good idea to lick it in the mouth? It's never a good idea to lick any horse in the mouth, but the original That's saying, my point! <laughs> the original saying is never look a gift horse in the mouth. Well, I think not licking a gift horse in the mouth is also very good advice. I think it's very sound. I just wanted to know for all intents and purposes. Well, for all intents and purposes, I think licking a gift horse in the mouth is a bad idea. <laughs> I think so too. You do know why it was originally look, correct? Do I know? Well, I, I don't. I wasn't really concerned. It was the licking part I was concerned about. Well, usually that seems to be what you're most interested in in that situation. The licking? Oh, I love the licking. Except uh, if it's a gift horse. <laughs> yeah, no, licking originally, uh, it originated from the fact that whenever somebody bought a horse, they would check its teeth to see its age and to see the quality of care it's received. I do that with women. <laughs> yeah. I do that with women. How does that go for you? I open their mouth and I check, uh, see if their wisdom, wisdom teeth are in uh, tack there. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Do they do they usually understand why you're doing that? I don't really care if they understand. All I know is if you've ever had a woman who doesn't know how to lay off the teeth, you'll understand my concern. Uh huh. So if a woman's a smoker, does that bother you? Well, it can be pretty disgusting unless they gargle a lot or, <laughs> you know, brush their teeth seven times a day. So you make exceptions if they've been tobacco free for a couple hours. If they've got big brown knockers, you bet. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Tom. I just wanted to make sure because uh, that was kind of a unique way of phrasing that. that By the uh, way, there's another good reason not to lick a gift horse in the mouth. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I got a drive-by flashing by two sets of knockers. Tell me about it. Where were you? I was on the corner of National and Sepulveda. A couple of girls, actually there were three girls in the car, and one was in the passenger seat, the one in the back, it was a yellow minivan, and they, of course women can't drive, so they were stuck right in the middle of the intersection, of, obviously there was a camera on that uh, corner, and I beamed my headlights because I'm trying to get through, and they must have been listening to the man because up went their shirt. <laughs> you weren't even trying to get flashed. No, I was just uh, trying to get the hell out of there. <laughs> I love that. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones here on this Flash Friday. At 1-800-5800-TOM, we have one of those uh, weird... Phenomena that happen only occasionally. We lost like four callers all at the same time. So this is one of those rare times when if you dial in right now, you're guaranteed to get in. Guaranteed. And it's rare. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Erica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing just great. Awesome. Well, I feel kind of like a role reversal here listening to your show because I married a guy fresh out of the gate at 18, which wasn't a smart idea. Um, at any rate, so I, I married him. He wanted to have a baby, so I had a baby at 19. And we're still, I, you know, I decided I wanted to separate because he was just completely lame. He would get drunk all the time, just absolutely ridiculous, and I've always made you know, a hell of a lot more money than he has. So, I so what made you, well, may I ask, and I know it had to be the sex at one point, what made you fall for a loser? Well, he was, he was fun. When we were young, he was fun. Well, when he, when we were younger together. And when you were younger, you liked partying with him, you liked drinking with him, you liked staying up late with him, and then later on you got serious about your career. 
Exactly. But he didn't. No, he didn't. He didn't because you see, all. he was who he was. Yeah. And you thought somehow that he would evolve along with you, which is a common misconception of young women that men are going to evolve in the same direction. Oh yeah, exactly. Or, or evolve at all. Yeah. Hello. I'm right here. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, he he didn't evolve at all, and he's you know still he's living on his sister's couch, and you know back in our home state of Virginia, and I live in Newport Beach, and take care of our daughter, but we're still married because I do not want to pay him alimony. Why do you have a child? Well, I I have my daughter from our marriage. Yeah, but why did you have a child with somebody like this? Because uh, I was young and dumb and. You know, and you full of his enthusiasm. Yes, I know. Exactly. So, you know, because I, I wanted to create this quote unquote family and home and yada, 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 but it didn't with, with, work. with a drunk. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So now. I now mean, I'm... the least you could have done is not have babies with a drunk. If you're hoping he'll evolve, wouldn't it make more sense to have a baby after the evolution takes place? Definitely. But you couldn't wait. You just couldn't wait. <laughs> That's true. You know, but at, at 19 years old, I didn't have much wisdom going on. Clearly. So, but, you know, you you live, you learn. But I, I avoid relationships, avoid any kind of situation where any guy wants to get attached. And, you know, it, it's a nightmare. I, I won't even do it. Look at that. You see, you could have had uh, you could have had a great life, never having gotten married, delayed having a child until you built up your fortune and had some fun traveling around the world and stuff like that with the money you make. Oh, yeah, definitely. Probably could have banged guys in, like, Italy and Spain and France, where all those romantic guys are. You could have been out there meeting guys. Oh yeah, exactly. Instead, you yeah. had to go to a instead you had to go to a twelve step program to meet the man of your dreams, <laughs> and then say to him, "I know you're drunk, but could you just impregnate me before you go to sleep?" And he was like, "Okay." <laughs> oh, that's, that that's is witty. romantic. Yeah, it would be witty if it wasn't so close to the truth. Yeah, no, it, it is very close to the truth. So you know, but. Hindsight's twenty twenty, like I said. So, you know, but I mean, I, I I still make good money. You know, I love my daughter. I take care of her. I don't look for a relationship. I'm still very successful. You know, but you know, I still have this lingering uh, husband, quote unquote, that uh, I need to divorce. But I'm just well. Every two days you stay married to him, you owe him a day of alimony. Oh, my God, I know. I mean, the thing is, the faster you divorce him, the less you'll owe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, I know. It's just, uh, yeah, you're right. I, I have to do it. I have to just, you know, cut my losses and, oh, uh, God, I wish some of this was tax deductible. <laughs> it's not. By the way, how long has it been since you split? Oh, we've we've been separated for like two, three years. All right, so that's uh, you'll have to pay him for like eighteen months. Oh my god! Yeah, but wait, wait a year and it'll be twenty-four months. Oh goodness! And that's so. As you see, what are you waiting for? Yeah, yeah, not not much. <laughs> By the way, uh, when you pay, hopefully you'll learn your lesson. Oh yeah, it lesson has learned. So I I just avoid altogether. I have plenty of guys who are like, oh, let's you know do this and do that, and I'm like, hell no, leave me alone. I'm completely content in my little you know beach cottage, and I have a good time. And don't don't come in and try to talk all your your game about uh, this, that, and the other. Did you tie the old tubies? I haven't because they won't tie my tubes. Really. Yeah, well, do yeah, because doctors are like, well, you're still you're still young. You might change your mind, and I'm like, no, you don't understand. I don't want to change my mind. I just want you to do it. They won't do it. They won't. Oh. They generally they won't tie women's tubes under twenty five thirty. 
Well, I know there are doctors out there. You just don't have the right doctor. Yeah, you're probably right about that. I, w- I wish they would, definitely, because I, I mean, I love my daughter to death, but never again. I understand, darling. Well, uh, good luck to you. Uh, thank you for that. Boy, oh, boy. It's Bob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Long time, hey. first time. Thank you. I have no problem with you correcting people's grammar and making fun of their vocabulary on the air, but I think that in this case, you need to be corrected about a phrase you've been using lately. Which one is that? You have been saying for all intensive purposes a number of times in the last few days. You have not been listening to the program. Do you understand you've been had? No. I've been listening. This all began with somebody calling here and talking to me about a commercial I read. That contained the phrase, for all intensive purposes. Okay. I tried to explain to the caller that the customer is always right, and if that's what the client wants to say, I'm going to say that. Oh. But the person continued to correct me as if I had written the commercial. <laughs> okay, I didn't So hear after that. a while, I just started using the phrase, and people like you have been calling. I've gotten easily 50 emails. From people who think they got gotcha, finally gotcha. Then I'm, I'm already getting emails from people who are saying it's not, you shouldn't lick a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> Which I also did on purpose. And sure enough, they're already writing in and correcting me. Well, it's just kind of like you're spreading the, the uh, misconception. More people hear you say it, and they're going to continue it- to use it. No, they, the, the, the other thing is that they're calling in to correct me or writing to me like like I don't know this. Okay, well, I, I just assumed that you did. I just couldn't believe you were using the wrong phrase. You may hear it in a commercial. Mm. Okay. And maybe that's what the client wanted to say, so I said it. Great. You know, I am not paid to correct the client or to, to rewrite people's grammar. I am paid to do what I'm told. Uh, and, and I, when, as I said on the air, if H&R Block wants me to say, H&R Block, you got people, it is not my job to correct them. Well, my faith in you has been restored. If McDonald's wants me to say, I'm loving it, I am so happy to say that McDonald's my advertiser. I'd even say you got people if they asked me to say. I would say anything McDonald's asked me to say. Anything. It could be the most illiterate phrase. I wouldn't care. All right. Well, that's all I had to say. I didn't catch the rest of the broadcast then. Any, By the way, any advertiser who wants me to read a completely grammatically incorrect sentence in a commercial, call our sales department because I will read anything you write long as it's true. Well, have a great day. Thank you. Jesus. <laughs> oh, my. I- I'm just blown away by this stuff. You know, it's it's like the old red ant theory that I've talked about on the air so many times. You want to ruin a talk show? Especially those AM talk shows with old callers, the ones I make, hello, the ones I make fun of all the time. All you have to do <laughs> is call in and say, Hello, I was wondering if anybody out there knows how to get rid of red ants. It's summertime and it's red ant season and they're all over my patio. If anybody out there knows the cure for red ants, could you please have them uh, call the station? I'll hang up and listen and it will ruin whatever talk show you're listening to. Because then all the elderly who have nothing better to do with their time will proceed to call in and tell you how to get rid of red ants. I mean, it's just that simple. And so sure enough, now it's with this thing, okay? I go on the radio and I make <laughs> I make one comment on the air, which was based on a commercial. I read this commercial on the air. And the commercial was read the way it was written. That's it. Not my job to be speculating on what the client wants. My job is to do what I'm told. 
Uh, sometimes uh, things that are considered grammatically incorrect have been some of the most successful ad campaigns ever devised, ever. Now, I can't be uh, sitting here uh, second-guessing an ad agency or a client. I'm not going to do it. So because uh, somebody assumed that I was illiterate because I read the commercial as written, I just continued using the phrase on the air, and now I've got this cavalcade of email from people who, who think they finally caught me doing something wrong. And if you call in here and tell me your boyfriend had a visectomy, I'm going to continue to repeat the word you used. There's nothing you can do about it. 1-800-5800-TOM is the Tom Lycus Show from Dallas. We are here with our friends at Live 105.3. We're here for the big Live 8 event that's happening tomorrow. And I'm going to broadcast live from there tomorrow between 4 and 6 p.m. Dallas time. And if you don't live in Dallas and you can't hear it on Live 105.3, you can go to live1053.com at five, I'm sorry, four central, two Pacific, five Eastern time. You can log on. You can listen right there. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Brandon on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Well, I was going to say we will be out there tomorrow, but I had a quick question. I'm sure you've probably answered this before. Uh, being that we are in Dallas, um, what is your opinion on the fact that Russ is in such legal trouble now? And are you going to meet with him while you're in town and talk to him about this or what? Well, first of all, Russ Martin is a friend of mine. And uh, uh, that, that friendship uh, supersedes anything anybody says or does, okay? Right. Um, I'm going to see Russ tonight. And, uh, you know, Russ Martin, in, in my mind... Uh, is not only a close friend and a good friend of the show, but I've been in his position. Right. I was once, I was once arrested, and can I tell you about myself? I was arrested, I didn't do what I was accused of doing. Right. It was a similar case to Russ's case. And so I know how these things can go, and I know he can't talk about it, and I know that you will never know the whole story because the person accused is always told by his attorney, you can't talk about this. And all, I'm not going to speak about Russ's case, but I'll speak about any case in general and my case. And that is uh, any woman can pick up that phone and call 911 and ruin your life, even if you didn't do anything. Right. And that's not a comment on any individual. That's a comment in general. No, I completely agree. I'm 22 years old, and I actually had a my girlfriend did the exact same thing, called the police, and uh, we had a whole ordeal out here, and that was that was what ended our relationship. And so I definitely know that they can totally exaggerate the whole thing. But uh, you know, is he holding up well, or is he? Because I know. Us yet? I uh, you know I haven't seen him yet, so I, I can't tell you anything about Russ except to say he sounds great on the radio. Yeah, yeah. And he's a friend of mine, and he's a friend of the show, and uh, I don't care what anybody writes, and I don't care what anybody says. He is my friend, and that's it. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, I won't waste any more time. I just wanted to ask that real quick, but uh, I appreciate yeah. you uh, taking my call, and I'll see you out there tomorrow. All right. I'm here to help. Thank you very much for the call. I appreciate it. It's 1-800-5800. Tom, we're in Dallas. With our friends from Live 105.3, we're here for the big Live 8 event. It's happening tomorrow night at the Palladium, and we're going to be here broadcasting tomorrow, beginning at 4 p.m. Dallas time. You'll hear it on Live 105.3 in Dallas and anywhere you can pick up Live 105.3 on the Internet. So be sure to tune in no matter where you are. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Why would he trust you? Because I give him what he wants, Tom. I'm good at what I do, if you understand what I mean. I don't want to say it over the radio. Because... There's no there's no chrome on your trailer hitch at home? Is that what you're telling us? Um, I think so. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Coming to you from Dallas, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Travis, online open telephone. Hello? 
Hey, I was wondering what you thought or would think about Barack Obama choosing Al Gore as a running mate. It would be a great idea, but I don't think it's going to happen. No. Why not? Because I don't think Al Gore is available. Oh, uh, really? Really? Oh, that sucks. I didn't know. I didn't know if he was like totally off politics or if he was just trying to do his own save the world thing. I think he's found a lot more satisfaction being the Al Gore that has a personality and an the, Al, the, the movie, the movie making Al Gore. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's you cool. know, he's already been vice president for eight years. Yeah, but I mean, actually, I'm not, how much do you think? And this is sort of negative, but Barack Obama has to think about uh, choosing a vice president that, of course, that if, if he was unfortunately to be assassinated, would then have to lead the country. You know, I mean, he might want to just. I guess that's always a factor for all potential presidents choosing their running mate. But I mean, I'm just guessing the odds are a little higher with Barack. Well, uh, we've talked about this on the air. A number of black friends of mine have made some very interesting comments, uh, uh, you know, wondering whether Barack Obama will be a target. And I understand why people might feel that way, especially anybody who remembers some of the previous targets, many of whom had similar political point of view, not necessarily the same race. Right. Yeah. All right, cool. That's all I got for you. Thank you for that. Thanks. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Phil on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Phil. Hey, I just want to say, you know, I love your show. Man, you got the best job in the world, okay? And we all love just listening to you. You know, a million people out there. And uh, you talked about a lot of the hot news reporters here in L.A. and some of the news anchors. Damn, you mentioned Jackie Johnson, Vera Jimenez. Uh, I think you didn't mention Laura Diaz. She's pretty hot still. She's getting a little older, but she still has some game. I want to know what you thought about that. Well, L.A., I think, has always had some of the hottest news reporters, and that's mainly because the TV stations want women uh, to tune in and watch the news, and uh, women uh, don't like news. So they put chicks uh, who are dressed uh, elegantly or dressed outrageously on the news uh, to get women to tune in. Yep. You know... Last uh, season at a Laker playoff game, Susie Saw, you know, that little Asian chick on CBS, was there yeah. in person. Now, on TV, sure, that's okay, but in person, she's freaking hot, man. You know, uh -huh. so it's just like, hey, I love them stepping that up. Well, uh, you know, uh, certainly the quality of most of the newscasts is pretty lousy. Yeah. So at least uh, give us some hot chicks to look at. At least. All right, dude, man. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you. Appreciate the call. Here's Cole on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Cole. What's up, man? Hey, uh, welcome to Dallas. First of all, man, I just wanted to tell you, thanks for bringing the 101 to the boys here in Dallas on 105.3. They needed it today. I heard Absolutely. You call in. <laughs> yeah, you set those boys straight. They needed it, man. If some chick wants to tell you you can't have a, a bike or a scooter, hey, they hit the road. You know, that's that's how it goes. Exactly. But um, also, Tom, I was wondering if I could have a word of advice from you, sir. What's that? Okay. I'm seeing this chick for uh, a couple of weeks, you know, nothing nothing uh, too serious, just kind of uh, a hump and dump kind of thing. I went back to my one-on-one -on -one notes, and I'm trying to follow that. So apparently she has a boyfriend, okay? She shows up on my doorstep yesterday with her dog and a bag of clothes saying her boyfriend found out about what was going on and she needs a place to stay. Okay, I told her, you know, uh, I got to go to work. I might see you in a couple of days. You know, you have my number. Call me back. Well, she calls me today and wants to know what's going on. She needs some help. What should I tell her? Tell her to get lost. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, uh, we'll do. But as long as I can keep that line open uh, of, uh, you know, of, of getting it when I need it. Yeah, I know the, 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 once you have to get involved in somebody's personal life, it's too much drama. It's too much work. Too much. Just an opinion.
one 800 tom It's the Tom Likas Show coming to you from Dallas. Here's Eddie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Tom, I had to tell you, not too long ago, you had a topic about uh, um, about these uh, girls going on vacations and cheating on their spouses. And what, what about it? Thing about the uh, crazy thing about it is that, um, you know, not too long ago, my, uh, me and my buddy started to throw a party, and this thing went on to four in the morning, you know, everybody's drunk, uh, two, of these, two of these girls uh, showed up with some of my friends, and, you know, they're from, they're, uh, from Arizona, both were married, have kids, um, anyway, to cut the story short, one of my buddies en- ended up nailing both of these girls, and it was like proof to everything that you have said. Girls go on vacation because they want to cheat on their spouses. Well, I think that that's not only true, I've taken full advantage of that more than once. Because <laughs> if you're in Cabo, or you're in Puerto Vallarta, or you're in uh, Waikiki, or you're in Palm Springs, you're going to see chicks out there. Tom, it is the greatest thing you could ever see. I mean, these girls just, you know, I mean, they had a they had a threesome inside the room, and then next thing you know, I wake up the next morning, I'm like, what's going on? And these girls just left before, like, I started asking questions. Hey, aren't you married or anything like that? They just took off. You know, they had their fun, and they're gone. And then back to their spouses, they went the next, uh, the next morning. Well, all I can say is that uh, at the hotel where Gary and I are staying, and we haven't named the hotel, but we're staying at a hotel. Uh, in Dallas, and it's an upscale hotel, and uh, there's apparently some kind of uh, preliminary activity going on prior to a wedding, and there's a bunch of chicks running around dressed a certain way. You can kind of tell who they all are. Yeah. <laughs> you can kind of see what's coming. Well, Tom, I mean, it was, uh, it was the craziest thing. I mean, and, you know, get this, my... My buddy said, "My buddy said it's not true. So girls that have babies is not loose. It's just perfect." And you know, he says it's, he said it's probably the easiest lead of his life. Anyways, well, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> he said they were looking for it, so he gave it to them. He gave them what they wanted. Sounds good to me. All right, Tom. You take care now. All right, Eddie. You too. Here's Gary on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, man, you're you're full of some good one-liners. I wrote down a young, dumb, and full of enthusiasm. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't catch that one. Only guys, I think, would catch that one. And uh, Dr. Turkey Neck, man, that's a good one, too. And I, I love the pics of hers and Hustler. Remember that one with that big old bush she had? Oh, yes. Yeah, yes, I do. That back. <laughs> that's right. Anyway, man, I need your advice. Okay. So I'm separated, yeah? And... Uh, yeah. During the separation, I got a promotion and more than doubled my salary. So I picked up a clue from some of my buddies, and uh, I basically just been paying for sex. I got more money than I know what to do with, so rather than deal with the dating BS, I just look up on the web and cross-reference it with one of those review sites and order the flavor of the week. So I was wondering what you thought about that. Well, um, you know, again, I don't believe in giving money to women to have sex because I believe you can have sex with women without giving them a penny. Yeah, but it takes effort, right? you got to go and deal with the, uh, the dating I, Well, I, I and... say it's always an option. It's always an option uh, for that reason. That is one of the reasons guys use hookers. I personally have never gone to a hooker and never will. Well, my first time was actually this year. This is the first time. I'm 43, never did it before. But uh, i got to tell you, it was a really good experience. She came, did what I want, and uh, then she left. <laughs> Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> exactly. So I'm on the web tonight looking for uh, my date for tomorrow. And Look at you. Uh, yeah, you know, they, they have some really cool Thanks. dates. Sorry. Anyway, we'll have they the have the Vice these, Squad down here. Yeah, they have these sites where you can uh, look up uh, girls offering various uh, services and then cross-reference it with another site that guys use to review them to make sure they're legit and that you get what you pay for. And like I said, it's been good so far. So there's been a Japanese girl. There's been a little beach bunny. I'm thinking maybe a, a Latino girl tomorrow. Look at you. Yeah. And you pick them off like a menu? Yeah, you just look at, look at their ad, see what they look like, see what they do, how much, and you give them a call and negotiate and work it out. But and they come to your home? Well, no, I don't let them come to my house. I get a hotel somewhere, and I have them come there. Wow. I don't want people coming to my home. 
but uh, well, I don't blame you. That's what I was going to ask you. No, no, no. But um, it's you know, like I said, uh, when I get the paycheck, I'm thinking, man, I put some in the four hundred one k, some in the bank, pay up a couple bills. And I'm thinking, hmm, a couple hundred bucks, and maybe I get a nice little girl that won't give me any hassle. Well, it's not much more expensive than taking them out to dinner. Exactly, that's right. Oh, so I, if, I got another one for you. Remember that uh, the illiterate one who said uh, uh, visectomy? Yes. You know, you know how me and my buddies uh, weed out the illiterate ones. How? You just ask them if they know why the moon shines, <laughs> and you'd be surprised. About ninety percent say no. Why? <laughs> it's like you're kidding me. You don't know? They say no. I always wondered, but I never. I never, and we just say, okay, that one's got to go. She don't know why the moon shines. So no, when, no, those are you kidding? Those are your prime suspects. Oh, uh, I don't know. Can remember that one? You, you imagine coming home to that one and debating with her. She's your wife. Well, I'm not saying you're going to marry them. I'm talking about the, these are the ones you want to have sex with. No, those are the crazy ones you want to have sex with, not the dumb ones. Just the wild, uh, insane weirdos that are the best in bed. I think. Ah, uh, the dumb ones are great. Don't knock the dumb ones. <laughs> Okay, man, we'll take care, and uh, I'm going to write down some more of your one-liners. Very good. I love it. Well, here we are with our friends at Live 105.3 in Dallas. Look for us tomorrow at Live 8. Look for us tonight at the Lodge. We're getting around. Just look for us, for Christ's sake. The Tom Likas Show.